Do I look washed out? Does my volume sound okay? Is this gonna be a hot mess? I don't know what I'm gonna say, but I'm here anyway, and I'm gonna make it work. And I don't know the rest. <laughs> Do I want to chop my varicosum or do I want to build some more moss poles? What do I want to do today? I have been dying to put these on a moss pole. I'm Melissa. Thank you so much for joining me here. I have some plant babies in front of me and for today's video, we are putting these on a moss pole. <laughs> I wanted to do something fun. I decided on that. Something pretty simple. Oh look, I have mite friends all over this. Hello. Oh, I hate to disturb them. They're like little good mites crawling all over the place. They're probably some kind of soil mite, even though it's living in moss. I wonder if this one has them. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I love moss poles. I'm obsessed. I have over 30. I actually haven't counted in a really long time, but I know I have a lot and we're gonna add two more to that collection. These actually were on a moss pole and they both suffered root rot and that's why they are looking like this. I had to take them off and completely start over and re-root them. I am very, very, very excited for these two plants. Number one, because they're both beautiful. And number two, I was just looking forward to growing these plants, I think the most. It was just so exciting when I got these plants. I was just so obsessed with them. And I still am, and they're doing well. They're just long overdue to be pulled up again. So let me tell you the two plants that we're working with. This one is a Philodendron Majestic. She is gorgeous. Absolutely stunning plant. Look at the shimmer and the color. And I have a little baby of her as well, a separate vine. I'm probably gonna add this in here so that I have one uh, is what I'm probably gonna do. So the Majestic I got as a plant locally last year. I had pulled it up almost immediately. I put it on a wire pole. It rotted, so I had to completely chop it back. I chopped it in three. Yeah, I had three cuts. I had two in here and then one in here. So I have three vines. The Majestic is a hybrid plant. It's a hybrid of the Philodendron varicosum, which I have, and the Philodendron sorteroi, which I also have, and I love them both. The next one has a long little story with me. I don't know if you guys remember my Philodendron serpents. It has the cutest fuzzy petioles of all time. They're seriously just so fuzzy and it's just so cool. Got a wonky leaf there that I'm probably gonna chop off so that I just have one cute leaf. I got this from an Etsy shop and I have an unboxing of this plant on my channel. A few days after unboxing, actually probably just like one or two days, I noticed a spot on the original leaf which is no longer on this plant and it was fungal. It had a spread. I have a photo. I have to dig through my camera roll to find it but I will put it on the screen. The spread stopped with a fungicide. I use copper fungicide by Bondi and that took care of it and it was fine. I had pulled it up root rot. It was in the substrate that we don't talk about and it rotted. So again, I had to completely regrow this plant. I actually chopped it and I have this top growth here, the top cut, and then I have the bottom cut that is actually starting to grow right here where my pinky is. I think for now, I'm going to start these on Thickly's grow poles just for the convenience. I don't really want to do any more wire right now at the moment. I honestly would love to do the Majestic on a wire, but I'm just gonna do thickly, just make it easy on myself. So I'll probably do the three just because I have them and I don't have to like buy anymore. So that's what I'm gonna do for these. And yeah, I know it was a bit of a long intro, so I hope you don't mind that. My grow lights are starting to go out, which is weird. They're all on different timers. I need to fix it. I have so much here on my table. I'm going to soak my moss. I have a cup of water here. This is the orchid moss from Better Grow. I get this at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. 
I'm gonna let this kind of absorb in here. So I grabbed two of their 3.0 poles. It's the clear ones that open from the front. I'm almost out of my moss pole mix and I should have enough left to do these two. And I brought out my new DIY mix if I need to take some chunky pieces just to amend it if I need to add a little bit more. And the pots I'm using are the Repot Me brand clear pots. They're my favorite. These are a five inch. They're a perfect size to start the thickly ones in. Sometimes I use a four inch if I feel like the plant is smaller, the four inches can fit the thickly ones. But I feel like starting these on a five inch, they should have enough roots. I feel like it should be fine. Amazon is here. This is like his fifth time here this week. All right, so we got our pot, we got our pole, and then Osmocote is the fertilizer of choice. While this moss is kind of getting hydrated here, I'm going to take apart these plants. Let's do the serpents first, since we have less to work with. These seriously have been in here for a very long time. These are both in my Ikea cabinet behind me. They've been living in there and I'm gonna put them back in there. I just have to make room for them on the top shelf because uh, it's the only spot that they will fit in with the pole. But as soon as I go to extend it, I have to take them out. I did throw a tiny bit of Osmico on top of the moss uh, probably last month sometime just because they weren't getting any nutrients at all. I wonder what that's if that's what prompted this new leaf to come out because that just came out I would say within the last few weeks I feel like. Since I do have two vines I have the bottom node that's growing and this one I'm going to add them both. This one here obviously is going to be a lot smaller and it may not do that well on the pole but we'll see. We're going to stick them there and see what it does. Removing caterpillars is seriously just some of the most satisfying things to do. I just love removing the dried caterpillar. Does anyone else? <laughs> I'm trying to get my husband to film a video with me. We'll see. I want him to repot that Marble Queen that's in his office. It's just a small starter plant that I took off of my Marble Queen. It really needs a repot and I don't think it has any fertilizer or anything in it and it gets low light so it doesn't grow all that much but he's been taking care of it. He's been watering it and doing his own thing with it. Sometimes I peek though in his office. It's the first thing I notice when I'm like looking in there. I'll occasionally mention to him, I'm like, oh, the plant seems it looks a bit thirsty. And then I'll catch him like going to, wa <laughs> going to water it. But I think he's getting better at knowing when it's thirsty. If I do get him to film, I'll get him to repot that plant because I don't think he even knows how to repot a plant. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I'll just maybe repot something with him. But I don't know if we'll do like a Q&A style because it might be kind of, I don't want it to be awkward for him. Uh, I don't know if like answering a bunch of a bunch of questions would be awkward, but maybe just like casually just like talking. Uh, maybe we can kind of just answer some maybe questions that I feel like you guys would want to know, maybe about like how we met and all that stuff. So we'll see. I'm going to work on it. You'll have to let me know what your guys' plans are for like this coming fall season. Fall is going to be here before you know it. It's crazy that I'm thinking it's already going to be September. With our weather here in Savannah, it stays pretty warm until I would, I would say even through November, uh, it probably wouldn't even drop below 50 that much, if that, if at all. So I'm probably going to be leaving my plants outside for a while. I left them out there until October, I think, last year, and then I brought them in. I brought them in too early. I definitely could have waited to bring them in, and I don't know where they're going to go. I have literally no room. I have so many big plants out there. I have three Monstera deliciosa, a ficus that's grown like crazy. I have a big alocasia out there now. I have philodendron. I have all of my imports still out there, which I need to take care of those. I have so many plants and not to mention my big snake plants and cacti. Oh, and I forgot I have the Jose and Villiettier out there too. Oh my gosh. I actually am very curious to know if any of them can withstand some degree of colder temperature. The new plant that I bought on the shopping trip that we planted out in the yard, it's like the philodendron saloon or whatever that name is. People have them planted in the yard in our neighborhood and they grow so big. They are so beautiful. I'm thinking that if it does get a little bit cold, 
Maybe I could try and cover something out there in the yard and then just see. I'm actually more of just like wanting to see what would happen. Some of you guys asked me if I would be planting something up a tree. So we have the tree out back. It's a pretty big tree and we do want to eventually do like a fire pit area out there. Maybe next year we can work on that some. And I do want to try and see if a monster deliciosa and a pothos will be hardy in our zone out there if they can tolerate it. All right, I think that's all the moss that's wanting to come off of this one. And yeah, we're not gonna be able to put this one. So <laughs> this chunk is not even rooted at all. There's one tiny little root. So we unfortunately have to stick him back in here. I didn't even know, I wasn't even paying attention. So what's gonna happen is this one is going to root off of the main node that's growing. So he's gonna be propping for a while. What I'll do is just stick him in here and maybe I'll just get rid of this cutting because I won't need this one once this one here grows. I can probably just sell it. I got most of the moss off, but you know, sometimes moss is just annoying but it's okay, I'm not gonna go crazy or anything. It has a pretty good root system. Now the leaf that is wonky, I do wanna get rid of. Um, this part's gonna be down in the soil anyway, and it's kinda ugly, so I'm just gonna cut this leaf right off. So this is what we are going to plant. I'm gonna let him sit in this moss water because I don't want him to dry out. So let's do uncover these guys. I don't know if I even want to do the small one on a pole or if I should just get rid of this little guy. I don't know. Let me take this one out first. More dried catafil. I will be labeling this as a chatty <laughs> uh, repot with me moss pole video since i am very chatty in this video look at all the uh, sphagnum moss the actual like moss growing isn't that cool you'll have to tell me your plans i think that's where i was going with that conversation about winter time like what are you guys bringing your plants in like sooner than later or are you going to try and leave them out a while oh she rooted this is going to take a while I'm sure you guys don't care about me plucking the moss off the roots. It's just very tedious sometimes, especially if they become rooted like this guy because there's so many secondary roots. That shopping video that I did not too long ago on my channel, I uh, told myself I'm putting myself on a ban until the end of the year. So my birthday's in January and I'm really going to try and not buy any plants until then. So for the holidays, I might just get a gift card. I need some new clothes, so maybe I can just spend money on some clothes instead of plants. I don't know, I'm gonna try. We are gonna take a trip back to North Carolina. We, my husband's, one of his friends that he grew, grew up with and went to school with and everything, uh, wants us to come stay with him and just to visit. So we're gonna go back there at some point. I think any time that we have a weekend that we can go, probably not when it gets super cold. So I don't know if it'll be next month or September or October maybe, I don't know. Uh, but I am gonna go back to the plant shops there. So if that's the case, I might give myself an exception. <laughs> If I, if I do go back, cause I don't know. I feel like if I'm gonna go back to NC and visit some of those plant shops that I used to go to all the time, it wouldn't be right to leave empty handed, right? I don't know, especially if I found something I really wanted. Even if I don't get anything, it would still be nice to look around and see all the plants. Uh, Gunter's Greenhouse, I loved going to Gunter's, although it was like a 45 minute drive from our house. Uh, we lived just outside of Raleigh. There was Atlantic Gardening that I went to. There was some other garden centers. We do want to drive through our old neighborhood. So we lived just outside of Raleigh in Garner. I actually lived in Cary for like five or six years. And then before that we had lived in Apex for five or six years. If any of those had like a rare plant, like probably the next rare plant that I would want would be 
Uh, Monstera Burl Marks Flame, I think is probably my next wish list. I haven't checked to see what the prices are on those plants at all, but if they do, if they are still expensive, then I might just hold off. I also want a variegated micans as well, the Aria, I guess. I was supposed to have an import coming that they were gonna gift me a variegated micans and like seven or eight other plants. I was gonna film an unboxing for them but they stood me up. Uh, yeah, so I'm not reaching back out to them again. It was uh, Aeroid Market. <laughs> they reached out to me and asked me to film an unboxing in exchange for plants because they said I could pick some of the plants. They said, I, I think they said I could pick two. And I saw that they had a, I asked them for a mint and they said no, I think, or they didn't have any. So I'm like, I saw the variegated micans and I'm like, okay, well, can I have a variegated micans? That's like the only one that I really wanted. I'm like, the rest you can just, it doesn't matter like whatever you want to put in there. I only wanted the variegated Mikan. So we went back and forth a few times and I would say about five weeks went past and I didn't, I hadn't heard anything from them or anything in a while. And so I reached back out to them on the, e on it through an email and I'm like, Hey, you know, I was just checking in. Are you like still wanting to send me plants for an unboxing video? Like I'm still like very open to the idea and I would be happy to like very nice and all that. And they said, oh yes, definitely. We're actually gonna be making t-shirts. Can you let me know your t-shirt size and we will get it shipped out to you like right away. Never heard from them again. So I'm just like, you know what, just I just think when companies do that, I just think it's so unprofessional. Uh, I don't know, it really bothers me and I try not to let it bother me, but as like somebody who is running a business, if you're reaching out to creators to like promote your business, wouldn't you want to stay on good terms with that creator or like, communicate. Uh, I don't know. I just, I don't understand it. Maybe they, they heard me, heard that I unfollowed Aeroid Asia. When I, when I did the unboxing and video for them, I had a thing in my email that said that the only way that I'd do the unboxing is if my content wasn't used in any kind of promotion. Like I didn't want that to happen. And that was like my terms. And I have like the email and everything from them that stated that. And then I go onto Instagram and I see that they had taken clips of my YouTube video and put it with some of their footage to run an ad. And I'm like, no, that is not okay. I clearly stated that this is not okay. Cause number one, you guys aren't paying me. Like you should be paying me to make this video for you. Not just in plants, you should actually be paying me. And if you're gonna run an ad using my content, then you need to pay me for that. So I would just, I just got so mad. Cause there's been companies that have stolen my content before. There's been a grow light company and a moss pole company uh, that stole my content and used it in an ad. There's actually been two grow light companies that stole my content without asking. They were claiming or made it seem like their product resulted in the growth of my plant, which is not the case at all. I was so mad. It takes me so long to grow some of my plants. And then if I have a setback with some of them and like, like these, if I have to rehab some and you know, they've been through a lot. And then for a company to just claim that their product grew it, it just, it infuriates me because I just take a lot of pride in my growth and it's a lot of hard work sometimes. Uh, I tend to buy like cuttings or small plants and grow them from small. There's no product that is a miracle product. There's people that will be like, oh, this is the best grow light to give you the best growth. Oh, this is the best fertilizer oh, this is the best this, and no, there's a lot of good products. A product doesn't determine growth because <laughs> there's a million reasons that go into plant growth. You know, the environment, how humid it is, how warm it is, the growing conditions. Yeah, fertilizer and light all plays a role in that, but so does a lot of other things, especially the care that you give the plant. Uh, so yeah. All right, I have a lot to go still, and I am just chatting away. <laughs> So I'm going to pause filming, untangle the rest of this. It's probably going to take me a good 20 minutes or so. It is very rooted in here. And then I will come back on and we will pot these up. So we are back. Look at all the roots that were contained in the moss. So I have two separate vines. 
Oh, there we go. So this one's the smaller one. And then this one is the bigger one. So I'm gonna do just these two. I'm not gonna do this little one because the growth that it's pushing out is very tiny. This guy isn't gonna do that well on this pole because these are gonna grow so much faster. And by the time I go to chop it, that one won't even be caught up. So I'm not gonna do that one. I'll probably just end up getting rid of that cutting. First things first is we have to make our poles the fun part. <laughs> So we're gonna do these together. Hey Chai, what you doing? Hmm? I'll have to bring you guys in soon. It's starting to get a little bit dark unless a rain cloud is coming in. I think it's heading towards seven. So this is the bottom. Make sure you to check the soil flaps uh, cause that goes in the soil. You have to try and build it first. Well, that was a lot easier to close than I remember. I'm kind of starting in the middle and closing the middle one and then going down that way. a lot easier than I thought for sure. Moss mess everywhere. You just wanna leave room for soil. Okay, I'm gonna do the serpents first because I don't need to add that much moss for the serpents because it's only one node that's growing. So let's fill this with our mix. So we do have enough moss pull mix. I'm just going to fill at the bottom. Uh oh. And then our pot. I like these pots because they have a center hole. So I stick the moss pole right in the center of that hole. It kind of just fits right in there. Oops. And I always center them in the pot. I don't put it way back to the edge. I'm not saying you can't, I just don't, I just prefer the center stability. Ugh. We're gonna take our serpents. All right, so our node is right here. So we're gonna anchor, it can pretty much be anchored on any way that you wanna do it. So any extra roots that won't fit in the front, I just wrap it around the back of the pole into the pot. The only thing about these poles is um, if you wanna use a clip, they don't really fit on. So what I'll probably do is take one of these flaps here and open it up and then anchor it inside against the moss. And I'll show you up close here when we're all done. Okay. 
And when you use a chunky mix, it's very aerated. So you just want to like get those air pockets. Oh, it looks so cute. <laughs> oh, I love it. He's wanting to turn a little bit. I was trying to get him just to go straight, but he's wanting to turn. So we're just gonna let him turn. That is so stinking cute. How cute is that? I love it. When I go to water these, I wanna keep this moist, but my aerated mix dries pretty quickly. So I normally water through the top, but sometimes when I'm just getting these guys established, I will water the soil if it needs it, if it's completely dry. Cause sometimes when you're watering the moss, um, it doesn't always necessarily get this all the way saturated uh, using thickly poles I've noticed. So sometimes I do have to water the soil. Forgot to do the soil flaps. I meant to, Bend those out, I forgot. Oh well, I hope it doesn't lift up because this kind of anchors it in there so it doesn't like pull up. I forgot to do that, it's okay. All right, let's fill with soil. All right, fill it up. Okay, this guy had a lot of roots, so we want to get those down a good way. See so the small vine, and you just want to look at the way that your cutting is growing. So you just want to get these nodes where the aerial roots are. You just want to get them against the moss. So whichever way you turn it, you don't want to turn it this way when they're on the back side. You want to make sure that you are anchoring it. And since these are open from the front, instead of clips, I will unlatch these and attach them into here. Once I get the roots and everything down in here, I'll latch it up top, but I'm just gonna make sure that I have it facing the right way. And then the bigger one, look at all those roots. Uh, same thing, I'm just gonna anchor it on this back side here. Kind of side by side. And all these extra roots I am feeding around in the back. I measure with my heart. That Mother Earth is some serious chunky perlite. I love it. I just had enough mix. I had to use a scoop or two of the other mix to get everything to fit, but I'll have to make more moss pole mix up this weekend. All of my stuff's out in the garage. I just have to make it, you know? So making sure there's not any huge air gaps. It should be good. All right. She is looking so good already. <laughs> I can't wait to show you them. <laughs> All right, I have two figure out how to get these attached. So yeah, I'm just gonna unclip these things and clip around the nodes. 
there's like a center spot and since I'm doing two vines these aren't really meant for two vines it's only meant for one vine which is another kind of annoying thing but I'm gonna try and get them in here together oh it's so cute Okay, they're a little squished in there together, but I'm going to get my water, water these, and then I will show you up close. What I meant to add in there was some mycorrhizae, I forgot. So what I'm gonna do is just sprinkle a little bit of this on top. Um, you can mix it in the soil, you don't have to put it on the roots, but I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit in here. I don't think the majestic, I don't think they really need it, but I just want a little bit of this in the soil. All right. Okay, I have some more light so you can see. This is the serpents. It's still very drippy. <laughs> uh, so that's how I have him on the pole. Hopefully you can make that out okay. I just have it latched. What I'll do is show you a different angle. Instead of me trying to hold it up, I'll just show you with me holding the camera. So that's the serpents. And then that is the majestic. Look at how cute. I love it. All right, let me uh, turn you around so you can actually see the poles. So here is the majestic. Look at her. She looks gorgeous. So you can see I squished the two vines in the middle there. It was very hard to do. <laughs> Just I latched them all in the inside at the bottom. That's what the base is looking like there. And then with the serpents, I latched the one way down here. It's at the soil level, so it's going to be hard to make out. And then the goal is to leave them uh, to clip each latch around the vines as it climbs uh, so that the nose are touching the moss but again it's going to be very hard to do as it grows and i'm sure that one's probably going to need extended sooner than later because it's already like you know all the way up at the top pretty much but i love how fluffy it is already i seriously love these plants and that's the uh sort of there and the varicosum those are the parents the sorderoy has one of its older bottom leaves going, you see there. It's one of the older leaves, so that's just natural aging process. So that one and then the varicosum are the parents. So what I'm gonna do is make room for these in here on my top shelf. So I'm gonna move this oh, monster elbow that's propping in stratum down here to the middle scoot this anthurium over it is very squished because i already have two poles in here and then i'm going to make room for these up here oh my goodness that looks so cute so cute i have them on that top shelf the serpents in the back and the majestic up front all right, that was fun. I'm gonna clean this mess up. I hope you enjoyed. I hope the mic sounds okay and it's a little bit louder and not too crazy. Uh, 
it was good. It was a good video. I feel accomplished getting that done. I feel good about that. And I'm excited to watch them grow. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Again, leave me any questions at all down below. I know I chatted a lot in this video. <laughs> So hopefully it wasn't too uh, chatty for some of you guys. Again, thank you for being here. I appreciate all of you so very much. And I will talk to you guys again very soon.